Hi, welcome to this week's study guide. It's good to be back with you. I really thank, I really thank Jim Luther for filling in for me. He did a wonderful job. Last week we did not have a study guide, even though I preached because I was out of town and didn't have a chance to film it. But this week we come back to you, and I hope that you're enjoying this Seeking Him Bible study. Maybe I don't. Maybe that's the wrong way to say it. Maybe I hope that you're not enjoying it. Maybe I hope that it's working on your heart. Maybe it's making you uncomfortable. And today's message certainly is one that should make you uncomfortable. It makes me uncomfortable as I prepare for it. One of the challenges of sin in our lives is that we often hide it. And that's human nature. And hidden sin is sin that we reduce down to being unimportant. It keeps us from being able to confess it and turn it over to God and be cleansed. And certainly makes us hypocrites. And so today I want to talk to you from 1 John 1. Uh, and actually we're going to be in more than 1 John 1. We're going to be in several verses today. In 1 John, we find seven places where it says, if we say, or some version of that, if we say. And then it goes on and it has, if we say X and we do Y, we are a liar. We're deceived. We're deceivers. So I'm going to give those to you today. And so here's what I want you to do. We want to list these and then ask yourself the question, what is the lie or false belief that is exposed by each one of these seven sayings? And ask yourself this question personally, do any of these apply to me? So here we go. These are seven if we say sayings. And the first one is in 1 John chapter 1, verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. And so what is the lie and what is it what is it hiding? What's hiding behind it? What's being exposed in this passage? Take some time and talk about that. Secondly, we're in 1 John 1:8. It says, "If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us." Again, what is the lie? that is exposed by this passage, and have you been guilty of it? Now we go on to 1 John 1.10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Again, what is the lie? What is being exposed? And have you dealt with this on your own? Certainly, as we think of 1 John 1.10, we know the Bible says all have sinned. There is no one righteous, no, not one. And so if we say that we have not sinned or that we're sinless, we're saying that God is lying because he says that we're all sinners. And so the question isn't whether or not we sin. The question is, do we come clean? Do we deal with it? Do we admit it? Do we confess it? Do we reject it? Do we turn away from it? And do we find grace for it? And so that is the question. Now let's move on to the next one. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. What is exposed in this passage and have you dealt with that yourself? Well, certainly if we come to know Christ and we don't keep his commandments, then our hearts have not been changed we have not been transformed by the renewing of our minds. We have not had our hearts changed by the presence of the Holy Spirit. And our desires to sin have not been eradicated. Now we know that we still go on sinning. But the sign of a Christian, one who has confessed Christ, received Christ, been changed by Christ, is that we hate our sin. And so the question again is, are we continuing to disobey God's commandments? Are we continuing to walk in sin? If so, we need, we need correction. Let's move on to the next one. 1 John 2, 6. The one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. And so what's being exposed here? And do you walk like Christ walked? So the very term Christian means little Christ. When we come to know him, we ought to begin to walk like he walked. That is a process that happens in our life, but more and more we ought to reflect Christ's likeness. 
If we are not concerned about that or it's not happening in our lives, again, we need to ask ourselves, have we truly been saved? And if we have truly been saved, this is a corrective for the church that John is giving us. We need to get right with Christ. That is what, that is what revival is all about. To admit these things, to correct them, to take them to the cross, to reject them, and to turn to Christ and find grace and forgiveness. Let's go to the next one. 1 John 2.9 The one who says he is in the light and yet hates his brother is in the darkness until now. What is that one all about? If we say we're in the light and yet we hate our brother, hate is, is a, a very fruit of the darkness. To hate our brother, that's our brother, our sister in Christ, or even our human brother or sister, to hate them is, is something that should be incomprehensible to the Christian. And yet, how many of us harbor ill will, bitter feelings, hatred? We need to deal with that. Confess it, take it to the cross. Now, and let's go on to 1 John 4, 20. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. Again, we're dealing with the love of a brother, but what does this particular passage tell us? Well, again, if we say that we love God and we hate our brothers, we're liars. And it's impossible to love God whom we have not seen and yet hate our brothers whom we have seen. And so again, we have to deal with this hatred, but again, what's exposed here is this. Do we really love God? And the way that's measured in this passage is, do we really love other people? Now we go on. And the answer to this one is this. The answer to all these happens here in 1 John 1, 7 and verse 9. And so we need to take all these things that have been brought to light, all these things that have been exposed, and here's what we do with them. 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. Verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There you go, folks. If we walk in the light, we will, we will we'll have fellowship with him and one another. We will be walking as we ought to walk. And if we find that we're not doing that, here's the answer. If we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That is the key. You want revival? You want to have the effective work of God in your life? You want to be pleasing to Him? You want to transform your family, transform your world? You cannot do it until you come clean. Let me close with this thought. James Hastings says this, One of the first evidences and signs of the coming of the Spirit of God and His coming is the coming of the light in the heart, it is a new discovery of the depth and reality of sin. It is the imperfect light, the twilight, in which so many professing Christians live that accounts for that weakened sense of sin which is so marked a feature of the present day. I pray that the light of Christ will fill your heart and in so doing, as the psalmist prayed, that it would search our hearts and reveal if there's any wicked way. If there is, take it to the cross, confess it, admit it, come clean, and God will clean you up. God bless you. Thanks for joining us.